good, good, good. Now, as your father probably told you, my name is Matt Foley, and I am a motivational speaker. He was a big man with a big style on stage. I am 35 years old, I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> and off stage, Chris Farley was, if anything, even bigger. You get your camera off the <laughs> Buffalo wing, not Joe's. It was an excessive, oversized life that led to this. His death, it was reported, came after several days of binging on booze and drugs and sex. Chris Farley was 33, the same age as his hero, comic John Belushi, was when he died. Farley's story, those who knew him tell us, is one of a funny big kid who struggled to fit in. Fame, he always hoped, would be the answer. He was very insecure. And I, I, I think when you're a bigger person, when you, I, I mean, myself, I mean, it's hard. You get up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you go, man, I'm already screwed. Look at me. French gal. Comedian weird, Tom Arnold was Farley's best friend for the past eight years. Farley was even best man at Arnold's wedding last year. He was a clown. I mean, he was a clown to the 10th degree. I mean, and yet, you saw that kid in him, and he was very lovable. As a kid growing up in Madison, Wisconsin, Farley always struggled with his size. His father, Farley has said, weighed up to 600 pounds. High school counselor Nick Burroughs says humor was Farley's way of diverting attention from his size. He was a kid that could sit at a lunchroom table, if you can think about your high school days yourself, and the whole table would be roaring, and you, you know where Chris Farley was. But Farley's problems began to mount in the late 80s in Chicago, after college, when he joined the famous Second City comedy troupe. Del Close was Farley's acting coach and friend. He came through the door, basically, with that enormously valuable quality of being just completely real and honest uh, on stage. And yet he also came through the door troubled. Close says Second City almost didn't hire Farley because he already had a reputation for erratic behavior off stage. He took a lot of dope and he drank a lot. And uh, not to put too fine a point on it. Close also worked with John Belushi and says even though Belushi was Farley's comic hero, the two men were very different. One thing that John Belushi's characters had a darkness and, a, and an aggressive edge to them, and Chris didn't have. Remember when you were with the Beatles? <laughs> Farley's comedy was goofy, happy, crazy with a lighter touch. That was awesome. Tom Arnold says Farley was very aware of his idol's flaws. I mean, it's something we talked about over the years, you know, you, to be like John Belushi, except to live, would be what to do. It didn't work out that way for Farley. He went successfully from Saturday Night Live to movies, and his fame grew. But so did his problems. Tom Arnold says no one tried harder to kick drugs and drink, but each time, Farley fell back. Friends say Farley hoped success would cure everything, but fame didn't help at all. So you think in your mind, well, if I just had money, if people just loved me, if I just had fame, then I would be okay, so you're always striving for it. But then when you get that, and you still don't, then it's, it could be suicide time. Yo soy el niño. Farley's excesses just got worse. By the time of his last appearance on Saturday Night Live, back in October, Farley weighed over 300 pounds. He wore a size 54 jacket. Farley's demons had won out again, this time for good. We can make it poetic, but the truth is he died a very painful, ugly, de sad death, and, it's, and, it, and we have to remember that. Um, you know, so that it's not repeated again and again. Everyone who knew him saw the talent and the intelligence and the sweetness of Chris Farley. Everyone saw it but him. At least, says Arnold, the pain is behind him. I imagine he's not scared anymore. He spent a lot of time being scared, you know, scared of getting caught, scared of not being able to control himself. 
and um, hopefully there's peace there for him.